So good day and welcome to this short Stranty video on a topic that I think you're going to find really useful, especially if you're studying for SEMA E2 and E3. And as you can see, the model we're looking at is on your screen, and that's Pestel. But what on earth does Pestel stand for? Well, before we get into that, I just want to give you a brief introduction. Now, I'm off on holiday tomorrow, um, and I've had to plan for it, really. I, I haven't just turned up the airport got on a plane and gone abroad. It doesn't work like that, does it? I want to make sure that my holidays are a real success. I want to make sure that my family and I thrive when we're on a holiday and we enjoy it to our fullest amount. So I've had to make some checks into the external environment before I do this. Now, firstly, I've made sure that the country we're going to fly to is politically stable because, of course, I don't want us to fly into a war. I've also had to make sure that actually I can afford to take the holiday and that we can afford to eat when we're, when we're over there. So I've made sure my economics, my own personal Personal economics are okay and we're gonna take a walking tour so I want to make sure that my whole family is healthy and fit enough to engage in activities like that when we're abroad and of course when we get to the airport I don't have a, a paper booking ticket anymore I have an app so I make sure my apps up to date and I can check the arrival and flight times straight to my phone actually and I'm also aware of the impact that my flight is going to have on the environment. And are there any ways that I could offset those complications? Perhaps I could take public transport to the airport. Perhaps I could only use public transport when I'm abroad or even get a train abroad. And of course, when I do get to the airport, I've got to take my passport because it is vital that I am legal and my family is legal when we travel abroad. And what I've been doing there, in a really basic sense, is a Pestel on my own holiday. Because Pestel is a mnemonic. It stands for political, like I was making sure my country was safe to travel to. Economic, making sure I had enough money and in fact the exchange rates were going to be healthy so I could afford my trip. Social, making sure I had health and care. Technological, I was using my app. Environmental, I was worried about the damage I was causing the environment by taking a flight. And finally, of course, I had to make sure I had my passport, my tickets, so I was nice and legal to fly. Now, I was doing this to make sure that my holidays are success and myself and my family thrive. And just in the same way, if businesses want to thrive, if they want to do more than just survive, they have to be aware of how their environment is changing. And what the pestle analysis model does, it helps companies analyse these six factors. It helps bring them together. And so by doing this, organisations are able to analyse and adapt and then thrive. So, what we're going to do now is explore each of these six factors. But to do so, I'm going to use a hypothetical example. This lovely, amazing graphic is an emblem of a car manufacturer that is based in country X, but actually it operates worldwide. And so every time we look at one of the Pestel factors, I'll then just bring it back really briefly to this car example, just to make sure we're absolutely clear so we can smash those E2 and E3 exams. So let's begin with political. Now, political factors are all about to what degree a government intervenes in the economy. So let's just bring up a few factors that I'm sure you've seen before, that you're well aware of, and you don't re need really explaining to you. So remember, these are just a handful of factors to do with political that can impact on a business. Remember, that's the really key thing we're taking from this. Let's just take one at random, the labour law. But how does that affect the organisation? Well, if they're employing staff, it really does affect them because you have to make sure that you're treating staff to the letter of the law in that company and that you're employing staff safely. Now, of course, that may change whichever government comes into power. And government investment, for example, is another way that a government can play a significant role in organisation success because there may be contracts available for organisations to bid for. There may also be organisations to work for. 
and governments also don't have, just have an impact in the laws they put forward or the investment they offer they also influence the entire culture of a country so perhaps one country might not have such a skilled labor force as another country because of the government and so an organization operating in both of those countries would have to adapt to that they'd have to make allowances for that and again this is what we're doing with this pesto we're seeing how the factors are going to affect the organization how can the organization adapt to them so let's go and see how it can adapt to our car manufacturer because remember we said that it was based in country x now a car manufacturers are traditionally large corporations so country X's government is gonna have quite an interest in this car manufacturer because the car manufacturer is gonna be paying quite a lot of taxes and is also going to be employing a large amount of country X's well not a large amount of their population but a significant amount of the population and so perhaps the government of country X might offer subsidies they might want car, uh, the car manufacturer to build factories in areas where there's not many jobs and so the government pro provides subsidies and its people get employment so there we go that's the first of our six factors political we're going to move on now to our first e which is economic and now again i'm going to put up a whole host of factors that i know you're all familiar with growth and exchange rates and inflation rates and interest rates and of course once again this is only a select few of the economic factors It's not a conclusive list but again surely we can see how these are going to affect organizations that are subject to them let's take interest rate for example now interest rates affect a firm's cost of capital and so it's affecting to what extent a business is able to grow and expand and exchange rates affect the cost of exporting goods and the supply and price of imported goods in an economy so again we can see the importance of these economic factors on organizations and how an organization is going to have to adapt to whatever these external factors are doing so let's see how our car manufacturer is bearing up now although we said it's based in country x we did say that actually the car manufacturer sells worldwide and of course that means it's got a huge consumer market but that also means that it's subject to global downturns global financial trends and of course if it's a downturn, then the car manufacturer is going to lose customs. So it has to be aware, it has to adapt to those trends. And of course, we've already mentioned exchange rates in the economic factors. Now, for a car manufacturer, it's going to impact the value of currencies against the home currency of country X. And just as a third factor, remember this is not a conclusive list, it's also can be good we've kind of painted it in a negative picture but actually our car manufacturer has a worldwide customer base and if it sees nations like china and brazil suddenly having huge growing economies it might think well hold on a minute maybe we should direct our advertising here maybe we should open up some sales offices here and start selling in these countries that have these big growing economies it's aware of the factors and it adapts to the factors to make sure that it can thrive subject to them okay so that's our first e we're now moving on to our s which is social now our social factors as you might expect from the name include the cultural and demographic aspects in the population now this can include anything from the attitudes to health to population growth rate to age distribution and career attributes as well as a society's emphasis on safety now these trends in social factors affect the demand for a company's products and how that company operates and so what we can see for an organization is that these social changes can create risk so in Britain over the last few years, there's been a sudden trend in clean eating. Basically, people are avoiding fats and sugars. And as such, you've seen kind of traditionally 
companies that are associated with being unhealthy, like fast food companies, have to adapt their menu so that people just don't think, oh, I'm not eating that, it's totally unhealthy. It's got to give them an option so it's still drawing these customers in the face of these social changes. So let's see how that this may affect our car manufacturer. So we've got our social trends. Well, recently on the streets of Britain, you see far more hybrid and electric cars. There's a far more trend for people to realize that the impact that they're having on the environment. Now, that's a factor we're going to come to later, but these are social trends. So car manufacturers have to adapt. They have to make sure that they're offering consumers that choice so that consumers just don't leave them for another company. They're adapting and surviving and thriving. Now, for our worldwide company, like our car manufacturer, it's operating in different markets around the world. Now, social trends are going to be changing differently in each of these markets. So the car manufacturer has to be aware of all these changes in all its different markets. So there we go. That is our social. And we're moving on down to technological. Now, I'm certainly going to put up some phrases you will all know well. First one is that should be IT, not just it. So we've got the internet, which I'm sure some of you are aware of. We've got social media, which I'm sure many of you are using right now. We've got computer security, automation, and the rate of technological change. And now, I'm sure it goes without saying for many of us, we've all seen the impact on organizations by the rise of digital industries. The internet has really changed organizations over the last few years. So I'm sure out of all of them, this factor needs the least explaining on the impact that it can have on organizations. But let's just take some real world examples, Nokia and Blackberry. Now they were the leading market companies in the mobile phone industry. That was until the introduction of another technology, smartphones. Now they didn't adapt quickly enough to this new threat, this new technological threat, so they didn't adapt and in a few years they've become minor players in the industry which they've been leading only a few years before. So what we can see, the consequences of technological risk can be really, really high. So that being said, how is that going to affect our car manufacturer? Well firstly, new technology is going to be key to product development. That goes especially for technological companies like car manufacturers. We've already mentioned the kind of a proliferation now of hybrid and electric cars that all comes from technology. You've got companies like Tes Tesla who are making their names of being technological, who are able to adjust the performance of a car in an update, just like iPhone can do with their phones. So for a car manufacturer, Investment in research and development is going to be key to their success so they can adapt to these new environments and IT is going to be vital for their successful production because, of course, the latest pr production technologies ensure that efficiencies are maximized. So there we go. That's technological. That is our one, two, three, fourth pastel factor. We come on to our second E now, which is environmental and just like when I was thinking about my holiday, I was thinking about the environment, but also I'd have to think about the weather and climate. Am I packing the right change of clothes? Oh, I've gone the wrong way there, sorry. Am I packing the right change of clothes for a hot climate? Now, of course, for organizations, the weather and climate may be especially important for industries such as tourism, farming, and insurance, because of course, if there's no rain, then farmers might find it really difficult to grow a specific type of crop. Or if there's a drought, for example. And then, of course, they have to raise their prices. And, of course, their market is going to suffer. Now, alongside this weather and climate in environmental factors, we also have the potential impacts of climate change, which I mentioned when I talked about my own holiday and worrying about using aeroplanes, which, of course, cost lots of carbon emissions in the environment. Now, people's awareness of these worries are changing the way that companies have to operate, the products they have to offer. Again, we're linking back to our car company, and car companies are now offering hybrid 
and electric vehicles to try and reduce people's impact on the environment. Now, environmental risks can apply to longer term changes that affect markets. So, for example, climate change or short term activities such as a one off pollution event like we see sometimes with oil spills in the ocean. Now, we've already touched on how this might affect our car manufacturer, but let's just make it explicitly clear. For example, fuel efficiency, people are very aware now of uh, the impact of the fuel they're using in their car. And so, as we said, we see more electric and hybrid vehicles. So it's vital that our car manufacturer adapts to these environmental changes. And again, that links into increased customer awareness of sustainability and the opportunities in future tech such as hybrid. There we go. That's the penultimate factor finished. Let's move on now to our final one, which is our legal factors, including things such as discrimination law, consumer law, employment law and health and safety law because of course these are the factors which govern how a company must operate its costs and the demand for its products and of course companies have to be aware of changes in this field because if they don't they could be breaking the law and if they're breaking the law they may get fines they may get damages to their reputation or perhaps they may even face closure so one final time let's see how this is going to impact our com car company from country x well let's imagine for example that country x brings in new laws on carbon emissions well then our car manufacturer is going to have to adapt to those conditions pretty quickly and of course, if it's operating worldwide, it's not subject just to its own laws in country X, but also to all the laws and all the companies, sorry, the countries it operates in worldwide. And of course, um, and just individual laws such as labour laws, the working conditions of each different country, union membership regulations in each different country. There we go, not company. So let's have a look at our pestle analysis for the final time there's our six factors hopefully this really brief uh video has given you all the information you're going to need to be able to use and apply this pesto model in your SEMA e2 and e3 exams thank you so much for listening and if you want more videos like this on all SEMA related topics be sure to subscribe thank you